everybody, welcome back to Old Play Roulette. I'm the fabulous Mr. Fox here with... Jay Random. And we are old people who want to look at old games and talk about stuff that might be in out of print or in a new edition. Specifically so, today, we're going to talk about Exalted First Edition. Yeah. Because it's March, and this is what we were supposed to be doing all month. We are doing, trying... Doing something. We're trying so hard. We're trying so hard, it's true. Um, so this Exalted... Book is in such bad shape. It's true. Oh, that the binding be... just came loose yeah. from the cover. It's done. <laughs> oh, no. Um, this is uh, the very first Exalted book I ever bought, and right. I bought this shortly before the Dragon-Blooded book came out, so... Yeah, I mean, so like, very early back when the run. book was brand new, so, I mean, it, it, it deserves to be falling apart by this, but it's earned it. Yeah. Um, I had a I had all of them, not all these little splat books, but I had all the Exalted books, and they disappeared one way or another. Um, a lot of them walked off in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Some of them I left places on accident. Yeah. But uh, So I've got a copy. Still have managed to keep a copy of Scavenger Sons. Um, I have Games of Divinity, which is one of the silliest goddamn books I've ever read in my life. Uh, Manacle and Coin, which was a really interesting one. That's one of the last books for first edition. Yeah, it is. And uh, I have this lonely little copy of Aspect Book Fire because they're my favorite Dragon Bloods. We're going to delve into the third edition, the long delayed version of the third edition. Oh, actually, I'm going to take back what I said earlier. Um, us doing all our Exalted stuff late isn't a mistake. It is on theme. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Exalted came out, what, four years late? Kickstarted in May of 2013. Um, projected to release in, uh, in October of 2013. Released in March of 2016. And it is now March of 2017, and that not a single supplement has released. Just the one. Well, if you call that a supplement. Um, I technically have to define it as a supplement. Well, we can call we'll get it, into this. We, we can talk call about it a supplement. Edition. What I call it is stuff that was cut out of the core material so that they can meet a stretch goal. We're, but it has nothing to do with first edition. We're, we're getting, we're doing this. We'll be able to bitch about that when we talk. First about thing, that. what I will say about first edition Exalted, is that it actually is responsible for Seven Realms Productions existing. Is it? It is. Fox and I met at um, a previous. Well, okay, my current employer, his previous employer. He's a lifer. And, uh, oh, don't say that. <laughs> anyway, um, but we met, we met at work, uh, and one of us overheard the other in conversation about role-playing games. Um, also, there is a little bit more to that than that. Bill Cooper told me to look for you. Did he? And I overheard you well, talking about, ahead. and I looked over and good saw your name tag, and I was like, oh, this must be that guy. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know... Billy Cooper, <laughs> Bill, Bill Cooper, by the way, runs, what is the name of his, it is Indiana Toy and Comic, Indianapolis Toy and Comic Expo. Expo. Yeah, Indianapolis Toy and Comic Expo. Uh, every year, uh, if you have not now seen that, you should check it out. Yeah, it's now, um, it's now hosted in Bloomington this year. Um, Bill is a great guy, mm -hmm. and um, I wish him all the, all the success. And it looks uh, like he's, you know, do, make it a go of and that. And the Toy and Comics Expo, for being, like, just completely indie run, it's fantastic. Yeah. First, so I was exalt. I was actually invited to participate in a first edition Exalted game, and the rest is history. So this book, probably indirectly responsible for Seven Realms Productions existing in this show you're watching right now. The other thing, when this was released, there was vague, uh, vague, you know, like sort of um, a connection being drawn between Exalted and White Wolf's. World of Darkness line, the classic World of Darkness, Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse. If not tacitly, then implicitly. Right. Where Exalted was reported to be, was you know, was reputed to be the this secret arcane prehistory yeah. of the World of Darkness. This possibility of. And I can only assume that someone came to their senses... And realize that uh, that would completely undo the background story yeah. of every other by game. The, by the light and grace of Sol Invictus, <laughs> blessed be whoever realized that that was not a good idea. Who is actually, <laughs> if that story is true and that is the prehistory of the world of darkness, Sol Invictus is Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. but uh, um, At least according to uh, the book Time of Judgment. But the setting, just, just kind of, it, it should suffice to say that the setting has never really changed much. Um, it is, it is, it has grown in third edition, but it it's is not. A bit. It's the same creation. And it's the classic, it, when, you, when you really look at Exalted's backstory, it is actually almost Greek mythology. 
A lot of mythologies. I mean, um, it's a lot of mythologies blended together, but you know, it's got s- the Titans who created the world, and the gods rose up to defeat them. Right. And the, the weapon that they employed were humans that they imbued with their power, hence the Exalted. The difference, like, when Exalted first began, I, some things about first edition that I've, I personally have uh, seemed to remember, and Fox I, Fox, I believe, is has actually said that he likes first edition more. I do like first edition more than second edition overall. Why do you say that? I that's, found that's interesting to me. The rules in second edition to be superior mechanically, but less fun to play. Interesting. Okay. Um, where and while first edition's rules absolutely broke down around the five essence point, they kind of really bogged things down, and sl- you had to kind of slog through after a certain point. A little bit. You started I, to have some very wonky re- uh, interactions between. High level charms. I mean, even just like my preferential character tends to be that solar sword princess multi attack monster that can really oh make combat drag. I just I felt that the rules fit the flavor a lot better in first edition than they did in second edition. The rules were which, also a little looser uh, in first edition. They're second a less edition, more I think. Gamey. Second edition, I think, tried to tried to rein them in. The first edition had this problem was something that we call paranoia combat. Oh, man, yeah. Or attrition combat. Yeah, we gotta talk about it. Paranoia. The problem is, is that while damage is mitigable, attacks outrun soak in this game. You're going to take a lot of damage if you get hit. They solve this by giving Exalted uh, what are called perfect effects. Perfect attack is I get to hit you without rolling. Right. Or I get to hit you and you don't get to defend, which can also include soak. But right. a perfect defense always trumps a perfect attack. Right. Because defender always wins in White Wolf's game philosophy. Right. So the thing is, those perfect defenses are charms, which means they cost essence and or willpower to use. Which means that you can sit and blow, but they, they, they completely stop an attack without rolling. Which means that I can blow my uh, my huge bundle of essence on a my super attack, and then... My opponent can say, nope, perfect defense. I'm sorry, but I'm always I, I'm always listening from the perspective and the headspace of the editor, and I'm just, like, cataloging all the sound bites that you just gave me of you saying, you can sit and blow, or I can sit and blow this huge. This is one of my best friends. Okay, so the problem runs in you, what you run into is that instead of using the flashy anime awesome attacks, that's not intelligent because at any moment someone can simply go nope and block it. Yeah. Which means that when I say paranoia combat, what you're doing is you're goading your opponent into using essence at the ra- at such a rate that he will run out before you do. And then they can't perfect. Defense. And then they can't perfect defense, in which case you murder them. Now, one thing I say at the time it wasn't so bad, but it did have this one awful just garbage rule. Where you made your characters with a point spread and then got a second point spread of free points that you then and had to freebie play. Points or bonus and this points. was this was a a currency that never appeared anywhere else in the game. So you had to had deal its own with exchange all of rates. it right now. It had its own exchange rates. It was a garbage, awful crap system that you'd have to be an idiot to think is an improvement over the way New World of Darkness is doing it, where you just get experience points. Uh, bonus points, I feel, were... It was good until we got a better way to do it. And yes. Why would you ever go back to it? It's like, <laughs> oh, you know what my car doesn't have enough of? Crankshafts. And the problem I've always had with uh, first edition, and to, we'll talk about second edition as well, but there are three tiers of sorcery, um, terrestrial, celestial, and solar. Solar circle spells, each one takes an additional turn to cast. And so there are, for example, so there is, for I remember, a solar circle attack spell. Um, I believe it's called Total Annihilation. But the problem is, is that it isn't actually something you can do because if you stand there and you know dance, wave your arms, and and yell uh, incantations for three rounds, someone is going to stick a diclave in your throat to stop you from getting that spell off. Yeah. Also, never try to do that against a circle of abyssals. We've told that story in a co- in a podcast. I think we have. So you should listen to our podcast. That yeah, was yeah, subtle, yeah. Right? we did. When, when we just ate that sorcerer's willpower to nothing, because you have to destroy. That's them. a problem with sorcery is you have to every spell costs willpower. One per tier of right. spell. You don't have that willpower to perfect, so that's a problem. Right. For the caster. Exalted first edition. It was it was brilliant. It was fun. It's 
big. It's larger than larger than life. Like it thinks big. It's larger than life. They it's tried got this wonderful myth building aspect to it. They tried to. They uh, they tried a lot of ideas that not all of them necessarily worked out, and some of them weren't refined enough to work. Yeah, they but threw they were a still lot good at the ideas. Wall. Uh, they threw a lot at the wall, and I feel like they stumbled a little bit in certain areas with the rules. Kind of trying to control characters and yet let them be big, exalted. legendary, larger than life, exalted. Exactly. Uh, what I was going to say is, you asked me if I like this one better. Yes, I did, and I do. I like this one better than the uh, than second edition. Okay. And I, I said a few reasons, like mechanically, why I like it. But there's a few things. Um, I feel that in second edition, the alchemicals were diminished and less interesting. Agreed. I um, feel that to the a degree, fair folk were likewise diminished and less interesting. And we talked about this. While the fair folk in this game were so mechanically obtuse, they were almost impossible to use. What I liked about it, and I know this sounds weird, I liked that they were so hard to use. Because anybody who wasn't absolutely dedicated to their abs- to playing them well, to playing their flavor, would just put the book down and never use it. The first edition Lunars, how did you feel about that? Now, here's the thing with them. Lunars were way, way more interesting. They had way more flavor. Um, they had a whole thing, that, a, a thing that was way more all their own. They at least had real perfect defenses. The Sidereals had a perfect defense that could move an entire city block. Neighborhood relocation stance. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm aware. Let's not, that's not even getting into world sculpting artistic vision. Man, screw Sidereals. But first edition <laughs> is, we had a bad experience with with, with, with Sidereals. No, I had, a, like, all, I had way more great experiences with them. I still hate them. It tried to do anime without being generic or copying a specific anime. And it Fair. did that fairly well. It does all that very, very well. It just, it struggles and it gets out of control. And the paranoia combat cast a thing, cast a shadow over its rules. And you'd think it would get better the higher, the stronger your character is. It only gets worse. We're going to move on to second edition and see where that, you know, where they went, like how deep the rabbit hole went. I'm going to talk about how much better terrestrials are in second edition. That's true. And how much worse everything else is. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> this is Old Play Roulette. I'm Fox Winner. I'm Jay Random. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.